and welcome back to touch line talk as i said we're going to go through everything happening these next couple days before we meet again on thursday because it's a lot and it's important starting with major league soccer all these games are on wednesday november 4th this is the final midweek trying to make some of these games up get as many games as possible for the teams that couldn't play because of the rapids all of that stuff so this is going to set the stage for decision day the league has officially announced they're going by points per game not surprising that was always what i assumed was going to happen and to me it's the right decision i don't think there's too much argument there yeah, <laughs> there's just no other way to do this Aside from deciding you're just going to punish teams who can't play all of their games. Regardless of whether that's Colorado and the outbreak they had that may or may not have been a result of them not being diligent and following protocols. Who knows? Or these teams that haven't had any positive tests but haven't been able to play because of positive tests in the other teams. This is just the right thing to do. So we're going by points per game, which changes the standings fairly significantly in terms of who's in and out and makes that win Colorado got over Seattle that much more important. So your games on Wednesday, Columbus versus Orlando, third versus fourth in the East. They're level on points and goal differential, but crew, the Columbus crew have an extra win. So these are obviously goal number one is to finish in the top four. Columbus, like I said, building some momentum. Caleb Porter really wants to get all of his best players into a rhythm and playing with each other again. So they're going to really be focused on trying to win these final games and finishing strong. Then you got Minnesota, who's fourth in the West against Chicago, 10th in the East. The Fire are putting in good performances. They're just not getting the results that they need, whether that was against the Union midweek or against Nashville over the weekend. But they're right there, again, 10th in the East, holding on to that final playoff spot. But it's kind of a mess down there. You got to give them credit. They're playing well. They're looking dangerous. You just got to find a way to get this thing over the finish line and pick up, again, those three points instead of one. It matters that much. Winning is a big, big deal in this sport. Then you got Nashville, who's 7th in the East against Dallas, 6th in the West. Both of these teams have now clinched playoff spots. Dallas is in the hunt for the top four in the West still. There's a, a fairly clear top four in the East. The West, it's very jumbled. Dallas has a chance to jump up there with a good finish to the season. And they're finally scoring goals is ultimately the takeaway here and the thing to know. It's been... A struggle at times most of the season to put together multi-goal performances and really be dangerous in front of net and then capitalize on those chances and turn them into goals. It's finally starting to happen. So they're gaining some momentum and playing well. Then you got Portland first in the West after this weekend against Colorado seventh in the West. If I did the math correctly, Colorado needs a point somewhere to clinch a playoff spot again I'm not going to be entirely confident in my numbers but I'm fairly certain that's the situation here Portland is trying to finish the top the west it's again it's a mess from one to six with all these teams moving around so much and the Rapids are coming off that really good win against Seattle they're feeling really good at the moment finally able to play again they're they're a force to be reckoned with. I've been high on this team and then it just wasn't happening. And then all of a sudden it started happening for them. They are genuinely good. How good? I mean, I don't think they're a top four team in the West, but they are certainly deserving of a playoff spot and they're on the verge of making that happen. Then you got the LA Galaxy, 10th in the West against Seattle, now third in the West. Again, Seattle working to clinch a top four spot. Still trying to get home field advantage for as long as possible. Supporter Shield's now out of the question. 
Portland, I believe, is still technically in the discussion if you get some really, really wacky, you know, 10 goal losses. But for the purposes of the conversation, it's a two team race between Toronto and Philly, neither of whom play midweek, so that we're just focusing on the Wednesday games here. And the Galaxy are still alive somehow, some way. They need everything to go right to get in, but it's not the kind of team you want to be playing if you're Seattle. This is a team that's desperate, that just got rid of its manager, is trying to find a way to sneak in. So Dominic Kinnear is back in charge. Those, these are always tough games, but it just, for me, is too little, too late for the Galaxy. I, I don't see him getting in. But mathematically, they're not eliminated yet, so they're still hanging on to hope. And then we go to the Champions League, some of your higher-profile matchups. Starting today, Tuesday, November 3rd, Atalanta and Liverpool. Liverpool may be getting some key players back. Jurgen Klopp has basically said it's going to be some really late game time decisions, specifically with, with relation to Naby Keita and Joel Matip. And if there's a game I want Joel Matip back for, it's this one with that Atalanta attack and the way that Atalanta play. You want experienced defenders who have done this before, played at the highest level. Obviously, you would want Virgil van Dijk above all else, but he's not there. So, this is the game you really want your experienced center backs instead of having to try and f move things around and put in inexperienced players. And It would be a real boost for Liverpool if they can get Mata back. They've given themselves enough room in this group where a loss here is by no means the end of the world. This is, of course, your probably your highest profile matchup in this group. To me, it's definitely the best two teams. I understand what Ajax has done. I would probably have picked Ajax to come out of some other groups, but I'm really high in this Atalanta team, and of course I'm not betting against Liverpool. So this game has massive implications. Atalanta's trying to find a way to get some more points here and make sure they go through as well. So that one should be a really good one. And then you've got the Group B games, which to me, this is easily the most intriguing group in the Champions League. Shakhtar is playing Gladbach in the game that we all had being uh, top of the group versus second place in the group at this point, right? And then uh, your bottom group matchup is Inter and Real Madrid, third and fourth in their four-team group. Of course, I harped on this last week for a reason. Those results were really fortunate for both Inter and Real Madrid that this group is wide open. Gladbach could have put themselves in a really good position, but they couldn't get all three points against Real Madrid. Again, there's our theme today. And so now, a win for Inter, a win for Real Madrid in this group looks very different. Can Shakhtar keep this up and find a way to get this win? Or at least get another point and put themselves in a position to get still to get through in this group. It's it's absolutely fascinating to me. So those are your big matchups on Tuesday, then Wednesday, November 4th. Club Brugge and Borussia Dortmund. Brugge are currently second in this group behind Lazio, which is why I wanted to mention this one. Dortmund's in a good position, but they're in a good position because these games are still there for them to win and to get points and take points away from other people and get themselves back into the top of this group. But a loss here would be a, another big blow. They got to find a way to can just start winning these games. They did it against St. Petersburg. Can they do it again against a better Brugge team that's been playing well in the Champions League? And then maybe your matchup of the Champions League week is Leipzig PSG for a couple reasons. First, this is a massive game to figure out who comes, who's going to be that second team in the group. United has just put themselves in a really good position that if they take care of business and do what they're supposed to, they're going through. And they're probably going through as the winners of the group after the goal difference that they put on Leipzig and the away win they got against PSG. So now you're looking at these two teams as the two fighting for one spot. Because that was always the question is obviously all three teams, all three of these teams can't come out of this group. 
And PSG is going to be without both Neymar and Mbappe, according to what Thomas Tuchel has said and reports. This is a game they could really, really use all of their players for. I mean, Leipzig is reeling right now, but this is the perfect opportunity to turn things around real quick. And if if Leipzig win this game, if you're PSG, you're running out of time. Because there is no team in the world, I've said this before, who needs to get out of the group stage and needs to do well in the Champions League more than PSG. Thomas Tuchel's entire job security is banked, is built, and determined by this competition. They drew a tough group. They had a poor start. Now you're facing some adversity. What are what are they able to do? Of course, this one game won't determine everything, but the pressure starts mounting if Leipzig can come away with all three points here. And then you start asking questions about Thomas Tuchel's job security if they can't get out of this group. So massive ramifications there. It's always There's always good matchups, which is one of the beautiful things about the Champions League because there are just so many good teams and the groups are divided and it's it's wonderful stuff. Before we get out of here today, also want to say, be sure, go vote, make your voice heard. Don't just complain about things you want to see different. Point out all of the flaws in this country. Please actually do something about it. Do your part. Let your politicians know what you want them to do, how they can serve you best. And that's by voting by appreciating the fact that we have the ability to vote in this country. So please make sure to do that. Chris Brown is taking a little time off after the end of the Major League Baseball season. So he will not be on today, which means up next on 110 Live is Josh Molnix with his show tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. Be sure to check that out. Check everything out at 110sportsmedia.com. Sign up for our newsletter so that you don't miss any of the best content we're putting out. Enjoy Champions League. Enjoy Major League Soccer. It's coming thick and fast still, and it's going to be for a long time. We got an international break coming up, so that's a little reprieve, but we're going right into the MLS playoffs at that point. So the soccer always continues. <laughs> we'll be here to talk about it. That's all for today, though. Thank you so much for listening to Touchline Talk, and we will see you. Thursday.